We only started about 10 o'clock this morning. Oh, so. yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Pretty much once we get once we get open, yeah. we'll kind of regulate our schedule. No, it ain't nothing. Well, the plans were made 10, 15 years prior. Hey guys, Mike here. So we're getting ready to do an epoxy flake coating on this concrete floor. Now we actually poured this concrete floor about six weeks in advance of doing the coating. So it's it's got a really good finish on it. We actually finished it by hand. And uh, it's got some slope to it. That, that thing you see in the middle there, that's a trench drain. This floor is actually going to be used for a brewery. I'll show you at the end of the video all the stuff they got in here for making the beer. So uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Plus you'll get to see the floor. I actually went back two years later and took a video to show you what the floor looks like two years from now. So it's going to be uh, uh, pretty cool to see what it looks like after we're all done. What we did, now it's just Darren and me here today putting the coating down. So this is a good to show you that, you know, two people can do uh, an epoxy flake coating like this if you got the right products and you got a little bit of uh, experience, a little bit of know-how on on the process and how it goes. Now for you guys that want to learn how to do epoxy flake coatings, I, I made a course for you. It's down in the description below. It shows you step by step everything you need to know about doing a coating like this so you to do it right. Um, there's, there's definitely a way to do it right and there's a way not to do it right. So you want to make sure you do these these coatings right so they don't blister off and peel off somewhere down the road. Now before we put this coating on we ground the floor so we we came in here with actually just some hand grinders on this one with hooked up to vacuums and we got a nice good profile on the concrete floor just by using hand grinders and uh, it wasn't too hard you know Darren and I we do that all the time so it probably took us an hour an hour and a half to get the floor all ground and ready to go and there wasn't any crack repair or any type of repair we had to do. The floor was in really good shape. All we had to do was just clean it afterwards and, and then we're ready to put the coating down. Now we're using actually like it's a hybrid type coating. It's a polyurea polyaspartic hybrid that we're, that we're putting on for a base coat. And the reason we're doing that is because this stuff, it cures really, really fast. So we can complete the whole process in a day. Now it'd be perfectly fine to use some type of epoxy as a base coat. I have all the products that I use, epoxy, polyureas, polyaspartics, in that course too. I show you the best products to use in there. You definitely don't want to use the big box store products for epoxy coatings or anything like that in your garages. They don't last. We grind those things off all the time and then we put our coatings on just because people have tried them. And then they're peeling off in a month or two and, and they you know they just want it done right you don't have to deal with that so we'll grind off a ton of those so please don't use those so Dan and I are getting ready um, to, to put the flake in the coating we're gonna get a little bit more of the coating down first and then I'm gonna show you how I broadcast the flake into it we put our coatings down the base coating goes down at about a couple hundred square feet a gallon it's a uh, two to one mix ratio, two parts A, one part B. Mix it together for about a minute or so and then we are ready to roll it on. The key is just getting it on nice and even. You don't want any puddles, you don't want any thin spots. So it's pretty easy to do that once you get the hang of how, and, you know, using an 18 inch roller like that. You can see I'm kind of going over it twice right there just to make sure it's all evened out. And this floor, like I said, it has about an inch and a half slope to that trench drain from the outside. And the coating's not going to run. It's not thick enough to run to the drain. So you, there's no worries there, even if you were doing this in a garage or something like that. But like the thumbnail said, when I bid this job for these people, I was $10,000 less than the next guy <laughs> that bid the job. So you can, you know, that kind of... You wonder why I got the job, right? I'm $10,000 less. So I'm thinking, holy cow, 10000 I mean, I'm not cheap on these floors. I cover that in the course too, the pricing, if you want to know about pricing of these floors. But I'm not really, I don't think I'm cheap doing these floors. I think my prices are right up there. 
you know, it's a fair price, but it's not cheap. And then somebody else gives them a price that's ten thousand dollars more. I just that just blows me away. You'll be able to hear that. You'll be able to hear. How, how do I know that? Because the homeowner told me. <laughs> Towards the end of the video, I got the I got the actual uh, homeowner saying that on video. So you'll be able to hear it. It's pretty cool to hear. And uh, they were glad that they got me, so they saved a bunch of money. They could put it, you know, more towards their brewery stuff. So here I am. I broadcast flake. We're using a quarter-inch flake on this. And I broadcast what we call a rejection. So I completely cover the base coat with the flake. And then the flake is actually going to be the floor. And then we'll put a clear top coat over that. So that does a couple things. It it helps add uh, durability to the floor because you're really thickening the floor up with the flake. And it gives the floor a little bit of texture afterwards too, so it's not really going to be slippery. If the floor gets wet, which this one is going to get wet all the time because they'll be rinsing those uh, brewery machines down every day. So they definitely didn't want a slippery floor here. Now that's That's basically how we broadcast the flake. We just put it in a five gallon bucket, grab a handful, throw it up in the air and and let it fall down, you know, as it spreads out. We mix the base coat in kits too, in sections. So we'll do about 180 square feet per kit. And that's basically two quarts of A to one quart of B. So three quarters of a gallon we'll mix up and then that's what we'll put down each time because this stuff it does set up pretty fast you gotta you gotta be moving right along pretty good but if you kinda know what you're doing it's it's really not that bad and like I said after I throw that flake on that's gonna take about an hour for that to cure and we'll be able to come back and, and do what you'll see here at the end of the video do what we need to do to get the top coat on get this finished today that way they can get right back on it tomorrow if they need to Darren's cutting in edges and, and you know getting all the edges ahead of me then I can come right behind him and fill in with the 18 inch roller doing the rolling and then I can go back and flake the, the next kit I'm gonna finish rolling out this one section before I go back and flake anymore you can see that's the owner in back way in back there he owns a couple he owns a pub in this town we're in he own, also owns the brewery so and this brewery also makes food and stuff like that so you can come in and eat and order your beer we actually did a concrete countertop at this brewery too I'll have that in another video so if you like that kind of stuff you know please hit subscribe you can see Darren and I are just working together to get this done this was about a 20 by 32 floor something like that about 600 square feet we got here so we got the base coat all rolled out and now I'm just going to finish with the flake. And once we finish with the flake, making sure everything's covered, then we just get ready to do the top coat. You know, we'll clean up our base coat stuff here, get the top coat out, get all the tops off them broken down. And we put the top coat on a little bit thicker than the base coat, so it, it covers really, really good. Darren's cleaning up and getting everything out of the way. We just throw the, the rollers and stuff away. We'll use, reuse the handles and everything, but the rollers, the brushes, the edge rollers, and all those, that stuff, we just throw all that stuff away. Some of that flake, you know, it does soak into the base coat. You just want to throw on enough so you don't really have any, any uh, wet base coat spots through the flake. If you do, you just throw on a little bit more in that area. So here we are. This is what we do once the, the base coat's all cured, hard, good enough to walk on. We'll scrape the flake. That does a couple things. It uh, gets rid of all the excess flake for us, number one. So we'll pick that excess flake up, put it back in the box. We can reuse that. But it also smooths out any any parts of the flake that might be sticking up out of the out of the base coat and that's kind of sharp because that flake is actually kind of sharp has some sharp edges 
So scraping it smooths it out, but still leaves it with enough texture so it won't be slippery. And then once we're done scraping, getting off all the excess flake, we'll vacuum up whatever we need to to get it really clean. Now here we are putting the top coat down. We use a clear polyaspartic top coat. This is some of the best top coat you can possibly put on a flake floor, whether it's a garage, a brewery like this, uh, a locker room, or you know, a bathroom, uh, 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 any, just about any type of coating you put down. A polyaspartic top coat is one of the best ones you can put down. And I, I go over in the course just what we use. So if you're thinking of doing this and you want to try it yourself, that's probably going to be your best option because I'll teach you how in there. There's a certain square footage you want to put this down at too for best results. So it's real important that whoever's you use, you know, you follow the manufacturer's instructions on just how far you're going to spread this stuff out. You don't want to get it too thin, especially on flake. But you can run into a few problems if you get it too thick too. So it's important that you measure out how far you're going to spread it out and then spread it out in that measured out area and get it really accurate. You can see Luke showed up to help us. He was on another job, and uh, by the time we got done the base coat and ready for the top coat, he was he was uh, all done the other job. He showed up over here to help us put this down. Definitely easier with three guys, but I mean it's possible. It's doable with two for sure. You can see I'm just slowly spreading that top coat out. Really want to get this on even. So we, what we call W roll it, and then we'll roll it again, and then we'll, we'll do a complete back roll from, like on here, it'd be from east to west, like I'm doing right there. And then that makes sure that you have no roller marks in there, and you've got a really nice even coverage on the flake. Like I said, there's a step-by-step -step process to this. It's really important you follow the process to get the best results. We do these floors for a living, so we do a ton of them, and we've got the process right down. So, so we have really, really good success on these coatings. You can see I'm spreading it and I'm rolling it at the same time, making sure I'm well within my coverage rate. So we're going to finish up this one little section then I'm going to then you're going to be able to hear the owners talking to us and telling us that I was $10,000 less than the next guy. So <laughs> I don't think I've ever been that much less than anybody on anything. But uh, that was pretty good to hear anyway and they were pretty happy they hired us. So here it is it's coming right up. Just listen listen closely and you'll be able to hear it here in a second. So that was it. Did you hear it right towards the end of that clip? They, they, they kind of laughed afterwards, but that was pretty funny. Now, here's what the outside of the brewery. This is the floor two years. So I went back two years later, and I took this video for you to show you just how it's holding up. It's holding up really, really good. Um, these are all the brewery machines in there they use to make the beer, and then they you know, they have to rinse them out and clean them out. Um, but all in all, they were really, they're really happy with this floor, and it's held up held up really really good it's got you know a little bit of discoloration from the barley and the beer and stuff they get all over the floor and they probably don't wash it as good as they could but that's the floor it came out really really nice this is the outside they got a food truck right out there all kinds of places to sit and eat um, it's actually right on a river so it's it is on the water I didn't get a picture of that but 
That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.